<laughs> Demanding rights and representation, these women protesters in Kabul say they were followed by Taliban fighters, who then beat and whipped them for their defiance of the new order. The Taliban initially promised to respect women's rights within the norms of Islamic law, but the UN says they are already breaking that commitment, generating what it calls palpable fear for women across Afghanistan. Every day we're receiving reports of rollbacks on women's rights. Women are prohibited from leaving the house without a mahram. In some provinces, they're stopped from going to work. Women protection centres that provide essential services for women who flee violence have been attacked. And safe houses for women human rights defenders, including journalists and activists, are at full capacity. Salah Abdislam, who has refused so far to cooperate with investigators. He's almost said nothing at all for the last five and a half years since he was arrested in the Molenbeek neighborhood in Brussels, March 2016. But he did break his silence yesterday, saying that he was a soldier or a fighter for the Islamic State. He also complained about the conditions that he was living in, um, but said it didn't really matter, that he didn't complain because he would have an afterlife and he would be resurrected. This does pose a problem for the presiding judge, Jean-Louis Perriers, because he has to maintain order in this courtroom and the outbursts of Salah Abdislam of course provoked some indignation and some frustration from some of the civil plaintiffs who were in the courtroom at the time. These are victims of the attack. A plan to ease the energy crisis in Lebanon has been agreed by four of the governments in the region. They will now try to work out the big challenge of piping Egyptian natural gas to Lebanese power stations via Syria. Electricity, petrol, medicines and even drinking water are running out fast in Lebanon. North Korea has celebrated its 73rd foundation anniversary with a nighttime military parade. Pictures published by North Korea state media showed marching rows of military personnel in orange hazmat suits with medical grade masks in an apparent symbol of COVID-19 response efforts in the country. Contrary to the usual display of ballistic missiles, North Korea put tractors and fire engines on their anniversary parade at the Kim the second Sung Square in the capital city of Pyongyang. Troops were also seen holding rifles and multiple rocket launchers to show their military strength. North Korea's Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un also attended the parade to have a look at the military show. However, he did not deliver any speech, unlike last October when the country held a pre-dawn military parade showcasing previously unseen intercontinental ballistic missiles. Pyongyang has continued to pursue its ballistic missile programs, for which it is internationally sanctioned. A meningitis outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo's northeastern province has killed 129 people since the first cases were discovered in June. You can say that uh, this uh, meningitis outbreak is uh, severe because the lethality of case fatality rate is higher, uh, around 50%. So that means that uh, there is not so much case, but the lethality is very high. At least 10 people have died in a violent fire after an explosion at a COVID-19 hospital in the Republic of North Macedonia. Firefighters were called to the blaze at around 9 o'clock in the evening local time. They took around 45 minutes to extinguish the flames. Several other people are injured and have been transported to hospitals in the capital. The temporary unit treating COVID patients was only built last year in the town of Tetovo.
A breaking news from Ethiopia's Amhara region, where reports say Tigray rebels have killed at least 125 people. The killings are said to have happened over two days in a village near the town of Dabat last week. Tigrayan forces deny the attacks, calling it a fabricated, fabricated allegation. We've been uh, speaking to the local administration, including uh, eyewitnesses. They're confirming that at least at least 125 people have died. Uh, which all, almost all of them, if not all of them, are Amharas. Uh, but in the last hour, the TPLF uh, spokesperson, Gitacha Redak, has come out to say that uh, they're calling for some kind of independent investigation. The weight of history lifted from this part of America. For more than 100 years, General Robert E. Lee has looked out over Richmond in Virginia. A reminder, this was the heart of the Confederacy, the capital, the centre of the insurrection he led to preserve slavery. Its continued domination of the skyline, a painful reminder. It took little time to remove the statue. The crowd that had gathered didn't hide their satisfaction. Other Confederate statues on this avenue have gone 160 across the country in the last year. Here in Richmond, this was the tallest, the last, the most symbolic. Calls to remove it grew louder last year after the murder of George Floyd and the nationwide racial justice protests that followed. 